ice in the form of ice, really. But let's go to Rene to kick off this very interesting discussion this morning. Yes, thank you very much, Eben. Of course, it's a news from a different field of study today. From its red dust storms, active volcanoes, and average temperature of minus 26 degrees in the winter. Why is this planet so interesting for exploration by global space agencies and a possible new home for humans? Now, to tell us more about this red planet, as it is commonly known, joining us in studio is the director of the Shallow Sky section at Astronomy Society of Southern Africa, Clyde Forster. Now, he focuses on the study of planets and for the past four years has been specializing in high-resolution images of Mars. A very good morning to you and thank you for being here. Good morning, Renee. Thank you. So let's begin with the ExoMars project, uh, Schiaparelli or Schiaparelli as it's called. Um, what was the main intention behind this? Okay, when we're trying to um, explore other planets and particularly the likes of Mars and the search for life or mm. potential life on, um, on Mars, both past and present, one of the key elements is to get instrumentation mm -hmm and obtain data from the location. And landing on Mars is not easy. Mm. Uh, the success rate uh, since the 1960s has not been particularly great. I'm talking certainly less than 50%. Mm. And this was a new, uh, a new unique uh, landing process that uh, the ESA is looking at to, to use to land the, uh, the rover on the mm. 2020 mission. So one of the key elements was to test the, the landing process. Uh, Chaparelli was the entry, descent, and landing demonstration module. Mm. And it was very much a demonstration unit. So there's always risk in terms of these. It was a new process. Um, but that was one of the key elements. Second one was to capture data as it went through the mm. atmosphere of Mars. And thirdly was to capture data on the surface when it actually got there. Unfortunately, not going to happen. Well, it, why is Mars the chosen planet for exploration? Why are we seeing this rush to Mars? Well, with, um, with humankind the way it is and what we have done to this planet, um, obviously a lot of people are seeing Mars as the new frontier for, for mankind. Um, Mars is the closest, certainly, um, environment that we have in the solar system to, to Earth. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it is uh, certainly an inhospitable, although we'll see, hopefully with a few images, that it's, it's extremely beautiful as well in its own way. So do tell us a bit about this planet. Um, what can we expect from the, the atmospheric uh, conditions and uh, what else should we know about this, this great planet? Okay, Mars firstly is, um, is approximately half the size of the Earth, mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's quite small. It has, uh, gravity-wise, it's about um, one-third of the, the, the gravity of Earth, which obviously has certain physiological impacts for, for humans um, going there. Um, it has got an atmosphere, um, unlike the Moon, so that brings its own challenges as well. And more specifically, the atmosphere of, um, of Mars is made up of 96% carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. But Mars um, orbits the, um, the Sun, uh, is the next planet out from the Sun, from the, from the Earth, orbiting about one and a half times the distance of, the, the, of Earth from the, the Sun. Mm. Um, and one of the key elements in terms of, of uh, humanity getting to, to Mars is that, um, similar to the Earth, um, it sits over on its axis. Mm. So Mars experiences quite intense um, seasons very similar to Earth. So that drives the weather conditions on, on, on Mars. Um, you did mention the temperatures a little bit earlier with mm. Mars being further away. It's quite a, quite a lot cooler than Earth. We don't reach such high temperatures as, as we do here, is that right? Cor correct, but in terms of Earth basis, um, we can say that the temperatures are, are extreme normally. Um, typically, temperatures will average between minus five minus 90. Mm -hmm. um, it does go lower than that mm -hmm. in certain places at the poles in winter. Mm -hmm. But for example, at the equator, uh, during summer conditions, it, it can actually be positive temperatures. Well, you have some images here that you've uh, taken yourself. 
Um, if you can just take us through them. Um, you focused on cloud formations on Mars, is that right? That's correct. Um, there's two primary um, weather conditions mm -hmm. that we, we, we consider on, on Mars. The, uh, the, the clouds, um, which are typically CO2 uh, based on the atmosphere, but there's also water ice clouds as well. Mm -hmm. And um, the second one, which is where there is a, a huge amount of interest, particularly at present, is the dust storms. Yes. Um, now, on, on these images, uh, these were taken uh, back in June this year, but um, down towards the, uh, the south or, or the northern um, polar cap, that's down at the bottom in these images, um, you can see on the, the lower right-hand side, um, there's actually white clouds. Mm -hmm. Now, these would typically be uh, water ice with, uh, with some CO2, um, whereas up in the, the top of the image on the, the left, uh, we've got the Hellas Basin. Now, this is one of the largest impact craters in the, uh, the solar system. It's approximately 2,300 kilometers diameter, mm -hmm. approximately seven kilometers deep, and it is one of the areas where there is intense dust storm activity normally generated. So it seems like a, a, a very dusty, dusty planet. But there's also some volcanoes as well. That's correct. It's, um, it's pretty impressive. Um, Olympus Mons is the largest volcano in the, in the solar system. In fact, OK, we can, um, if we can just stay on that image, right, um, OK, I uh, don't know if we can go back, but that, that is Olympus Mons. Mm -hmm. um, it is the largest volcano that we know of. OK, if we go back, that's correct. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, you can see a, a, um, a little bit of a bright donut almost on the edge of the image. Mm -hmm. That is Olympus Mons. Um, also on this image, just while we're here, you can see the, um, the horizontal lines running across the center of the top of the image. Now, that is the Valles Malineris, which is a huge um, Grand Canyon-type structure okay. on, on Mars. 4,000 kilometers long, 200 kilometers wide, 7 kilometers um, deep. But the volcanoes, this, this area on the right-hand side is what they call the Tharsis re region, and there's a number of giant volcanoes there, the largest of which is Olympus Mons. Now, Evan actually has a question yeah, for you. I'm quite interested. I, I know there's a lot of activity and a lot of hype around Mars right now, and uh, of course many businessmen are lining it up as the next big thing, but uh, I wanted to look at the serious science a little bit more about the colonization process, if it is at all possible, how long sort of time frame do we have to look at it, and, and what do we need to do on Mars to make it a little bit more hospitable for, for human life, if we can <coughs> call it that? Cool. Um, obviously, there's things that we need as humans to survive. Hmm. Uh, this is an environment that we're dealing with that is, is not suited naturally to, to human existence. Yeah. Um, obviously, we need air to breathe. Uh, we can't breathe the, breathe the atmosphere that's on Mars. We'll die within minutes. Yeah. Um, we need water to, to survive. We need food to survive. Now, initially, my, and again, these are my personal views, um, not of any of the, um, the space race mm -hmm. contendants, but um, I think the general view is that we will have to take those initial resources to Mars possibly even before the first um, astronauts arrive there, so that we've got a base mm. um, of resources before we get there. Having said that, the atmosphere of Mars, CO2, obviously contains oxygen. We can split the CO2. We have the technology to, to do that. We have water there. So those are base resources that we do have available on Mars. We know mm. that there's iron, nickel, meteorites um, quite substantial amounts of them. We've seen those on the rover images. So there is resources there that we can use. However, initially, we definitely going, my view is that we're definitely going to have to take resources there. Thank you. Well, we will be continuing this discussion after the break. But first, we have to go to a bit of social media. But Eben will have that for you. Yeah, it's been a busy, busy... Well, it's a great morning, really, if you're a football...